Then we got a photo leg session. What did you do? Uh, just, just in a gym, a uh, trainer sort of saying, go 14k. Uh, On a treadmill? Yeah. So, okay, yeah, sorry, so you. <coughs> just change the speed during change the session. Change the speed? And how often did you change the speed? Um, I think one minute faster, maybe, or two minutes faster, and then slow down again. Okay, anyone else? What did you do? I was a similar sort of um, two minute flight jog. Yeah. Okay, four, three, two minute blocks. Yeah. Far left just means speed play. Swedish, Norwegian word? Swedish. 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 Who said that? Swedish. <laughs> um, speed play, so playing with your speed, so going very, pretty slowly, jogging, and then bursts of speed. Could be between a lamppost, between the benches, one minute, 1k. It could be very often, it could be two or three times, okay? It's, it keeps you motivated, you can make up as you go along, it can be off road. It can be in the snow. It's a great session just to get off the track, get off the road. Okay. Are you getting the same benefits out of doing shorter sprints as you would be if you did that sprint over a longer? In general, the shorter, faster sprints are better for your shorter, faster races, and in general, your longer, slightly slower races are better for longer distances. But having said that, they're all good for everything. So you might want to do a fart leg where. You're changing your speed every minute and really thrashing that for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Another time you might want to have you know, periods where you're racing for three minutes and then jogging for six minutes. Mm -hmm. So you, want to, you can just play with it. That's you know, speed play, just play with that. You, you, see, you see the interesting bit between you explained the threshold run, the threshold run session and the fart leg session is because in the fart leg session you, you just dip over and under the threshold point all the time, you know, although it's maybe a little bit shorter, but you get a similar sort of training stimulus as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, putting it all together, hills, you can have hills where you're just running on the hills constantly for 30 minutes, up and down like Kenyans do. You can have sessions where you run up really fast a hill five times, do that three, three sets of that. Um, why leg strength, VO2 max, good running form. Um, fart leg, good for aerobic capacity, gain leg strength and just maintain your interest. Speed endurance, aerobic and anaerobic cap capacity, leg strength form, VO2 max, it's, it's all there. If you do one of these sessions a week, that'd be great. You don't need to do one of, one of each of these a week, just one would be, would be, would be great for marathon. Just say about hills as well, don't be scared of going to the hill session. There is a huge range of ability at every session you do. So don't think I'll be, it would be too difficult for me. It, it would be hard, but it won't be too difficult for me. There are loads of sessions, hill sessions. There's Gowan does a session at Primrose Hill. Lars does a session at Hampstead Hill. Karen does at Greenwich. Um, Speed Endurance, as say, Urban, Malcolm, um, and also Beata on Thursday. And Dave Chalton. On Tuesday. Okay, so putting it all together, um, which of these boxes does speed cover speed? So track session, hill sessions, so they shout it out. So, you know, does track do speed work? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you read them out? So I cannot see. No. No. Uh, track. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna, can, you see, can you see these ones? Okay, okay so track, yeah. yes. fast hills, yes. yeah. Kenyan hills, yeah. Bartlett, yeah. Yeah. lactate threshold, no. again, long runs, no, no. pace runs, no. speed endurance, maybe. Um, endurance, track, Depends. speed endurance, no. not, not really long, but fast hills, Kenyan Hills? Yes. Far leg? No. Depending on distance, it could be. Yes. Again, depending on mm. distance. <coughs> yes. Yeah, okay. In pace ones, yeah. Uh, race pace? Well, really, it's just a pace one. Yeah. Uh, intensity? Track? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
over distance in. Can, 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 you explain, can you explain what Uphill. you mean? Can you explain again what you mean by over distance? Over distance is running more than your race distance. Mm. Uphill? Okay, that's the obvious. Su success? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then let's have a quick look. Is there anything we got? Over distance, long runs, question mark. Some people can do it, most people can't. But one important thing, we're talking about pacing of your runs. Don't just focus on your pace in terms of your, your watch. Think about your body. If you've had a hard week, don't still try and do six minute mile. Change it to six, 10, 6, 15. If you've done a 20 mile run the day before, don't try and do your eight, eight lots of 800 meters at five minute per mile. Change it to 5.15. So keep your intensity your perceived effort rather than the actual time because it depends on how you're feeling if it's windy if it's hilly what the train is what the temperature is yeah so don't be a, don't be a slave to the watch yeah or the go, theory if you go to a session like Malcolm's at Wilson or Carrot at uh, Greenwich Go <coughs> they always publish what the session is going to be beforehand it's worth working out what time say it's a three times two mile session you should be working out what time you think you're going to do those reps in, and then just using a stopwatch. You don't need to go on and say what pace you're running at. You should be trying to just pace yourself and, and working out what you're doing in advance of the session. That's the best way to get the most out of the session because you get to learn the pace you're running at rather than looking down at your watch every, every 10 seconds. If you do that in a marathon, you're going to trip over somebody and keep looking at your watch. So get to learn your pace is really, really important. Okay, so. Okay. What session have I missed out? What's the most important session? Recovery. Exactly. <laughs> I think this last year, didn't I? <laughs> so, why? What, what's, why is that the most important session? It's when your body improves, it's when it adapts to training level. Exactly. You don't get better during your training, you get it worse. How do I know that? Because after training, could you then do that same training again? No, you can't, which means you've actually got less fit. So you have to recover to get the fitness. You have to adapt to get the fitness. And the only way you can adapt to get the fitness is to rest. Okay? And what does rest mean? Sleep, the most important. You need to, you need to start, those who are doing the marathon, you know, you've got to get early nights, you've got to get good sleep, whatever that is, means for you. I used to, well, I still do, um, just go into the photo room, go behind the cupboard, get mates with the photo copy guy, and just put your head down for 10 minutes, and it does wonders. Um, some companies have actually got sleep rooms, so if you've got one, if you're, if you're like Dilworth and Touche or whatever, use it, okay? Um, Rest days, so at least at least once a week for you guys, who, who, as you, we know you're beginners and you're running only three to four times a week, at least one day should be complete rest, nothing. Um, you should also have days where you might be active but they're recovery, so you might be doing gentle runs, you might be doing cross training. Swimming is great for marathon training, okay, I think, because it acts like a nice little massage, it rests your legs, you still are doing some work, um, it's great. Um, and you should also think about your strengthening and stretching your body. Because when you're doing these runs, you're damaging yourself, you're probably tightening up. Any exercise, you, you're really quite tightening, you're tightening the muscle you've used. So you need to untighten those and get the mobility back into those. And you do that by stretching before, stretching after every run you do, don't you? Yeah. Um, but that's just to get back to what you were before the run. If you want to actually increase your mobility, full stop, then you have, should have separate sessions where you are doing straight stretching. Okay, and this is like half an hour stretching, um, and you can combine that into gym work, core conditioning, Pilates work. Okay, anyone do some, you know, a session of Pilates or core or. Okay, cool. 
There is, a quick plug here, there is a Serpentine semi-official Pilates session, Monday nights. Um, if you're interested, I will give you the details of that. It's on the website. Um, some people do sort of five mile recovery runs on their rest, sort of rest days, sort of 35 minutes, easy running, mm. nice and relaxed, in the park, off the road. Um, so <coughs> people find that relaxing, it helps you um, stretch and just, just relax a bit. Um, be careful that you're not just adding lots of junk mileage and, or, or and that you're still working. If you're still working doing that, uh, don't, don't worry. It should only really, it should really be a run that doesn't hurt, doesn't feel like a run at all. Okay. I tried it and I didn't like it, um, but a lot of people use it. Okay. Mm, just a quick one, like for some of you guys who may do the club championship half marathon, Tunbridge Wells, is it soon? Yeah. You know, like some sort of a, how much recovery should I take off after I've done a half marathon? They say, rule of thumb, a day a mile. Um, really, if you are training for the marathon, you want to make a decision. Are you going to train through the half marathon at Thomas Wells? Mm. In other words, just treat it as a training run? Or are you going to try and test yourself? You know, where, where am I in my training? Have a little bit of a taper, take a couple of days off, and take a couple of days off afterwards so that you are recovering properly. I'm going to do the latter, just because I fancy doing, uh, trying to do a, a good half marathon. You might think, right, I'm just going to use it as, a, as my long run, I'm not going to taper beforehand, and I'm not going to particularly rest afterwards. Mm -hmm. But expect to go slower. Mm -hmm. That's fine. In terms of recovery, um, after any hard race, you should really be giving yourself a couple of days off. And if, you're, if you've got a hard session booked for, say, the Tuesday, Either don't do it and do something a little bit less intense, or if you can do it, just good warm up and make and just allow yourself to go a little bit slower. So if it's a five k session, maybe go at ten k pace. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So? yeah. Is anybody doing the the twenty mile race as well? There's all this fashionable twenty, 20 mile races have been up. in discussion in Serbia for ages. We used to have it as part of a club championship. It was mm. cancelled because it was thought that it encouraged people to sort of hurt themselves before a marathon. Uh, my view is that we're all adults and we all make a mind up on that. Um, but there is a risk. If you do a 20 mile race and you, and you, you know, race it, then you won't be able to you know, really, really race it. You shouldn't really be training for a week or two properly afterwards. And you can't really do that in a build up to a marathon because you can't waste two weeks of training. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people do a progression run where you start off at, say, a minute per mile slower for the first third and then go to 30 seconds per mile slower for the next third and then hit your marathon pace. Something like that, or maybe the last third, really race it. Mm. Okay? So there's some options for a 20 mile run. Some people can take it, some people can race that properly for 20 miles and then have a few days off and then get back into marathon training. You probably can't. Okay. So anyone who's going to do Worthing or Finchley or Brownlee? Good. Yeah. yeah. Finished. Okay. I mean, what were you going to do? Thameside. I was going to do. <coughs> I can't remember if ten. Is it ten side? Kingston. Kingston. Yeah. Kingston. Sixteen. Happy. So how are you going to play it? So I was going to do one slowly, and then I was going to do one at my own pace. Okay. So there, you weren't going to race. Do it. You weren't going to race it as a twenty-mile race. You were going to just do it. Put yeah. do it marathon pace. So that's a good, good way of do, using that as a marathon training. Okay. You won't get a, your best possible twenty-mile. PB, but it'll still be a good training and you'll get a good time. Be a bit careful about doing 20 miles of marathon pace if it's anywhere near the marathon. Uh, I can't remember where it went. I can't remember where it went. We know about a month before, but they're consecutively. <coughs> yeah, you might want to consider, as I said, progressing yet and doing the first half just 30 seconds slower or a minute slower and then going into marathon pace. Because then that'll simulate being tired and having to go at marathon pace okay. yeah, in the last six, seven miles of a race. The you'll get though is that you'll get to 20 miles at the end and think, bloody hell, that was a long way. And you'll think, and six more? Mm -hmm. And you'll think about how fast you want to start on the day, because mm -hmm. you'll now realise just getting to 20 is not as easy as it might appear on the chart. Mm -hmm. Okay.